I'm here at Loading Bar in London's Dalston to answer one simple question. Which is the best VR headset for you? After all, in just a few short years, we've gone from a world with no virtual reality headsets to a world with four, possibly even, well, five virtual reality headsets. There's hot new thing PlayStation VR for all the cool kids that like having a small London nightclub strapped to their faces, the HTC Vibe for the nerds that want to look like some sort of HR Geiger nightmare, and even Google Cardboard. Yes, my friends, it's a joyous time to be alive. But let's say for a moment you aren't flush with cash, like say a doctor or a YouTuber with a gambling website. You can't buy all the VR headsets, so what do you do then? Fortunately, we at Ars Technica have been sliding our sweaty foreheads into the Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, PSVR, Samsung Gear VR, and Google Cardboard for months now. So much so that we think it's about time to give you a hard, once and for all definitive, totally serious buyer's guide for the best VR headset just for you. Let's kick off with a bang and answer the most difficult, most important question of all. It's Google Cardboard. It costs five bucks or five pounds and it works with virtually any Android handset. Next. To set up Google Cardboard and Gear VR, you slide your phone into the housing, load up an app or the Oculus launcher and strap it to your face. That's easy and accessible, even for the most tech adverse. PSVR is the easiest of the tethered headsets. Plug your processing box into the PS4 via USB, plug in the pass-through HDMI cable, plug in the camera, plug in the VR headset into the processing box, and boom, you're off. All you have to watch out for is the stupidly short camera cable. That's swiftly followed by Oculus, which requires plugging in a USB camera and the headset with USB and HDMI into a PC, followed by an obscenely long setup process and various firmware updates. You're looking at at least 20 minutes to get up and running, and that assumes you've already got the latest graphics card drivers and everything works straight away. If you get stuck, support is generally good, with a dedicated website and plenty of frequently asked questions to browse. Setting up the HTC Vive is largely the same, except you have to find a place for the tracking boxes on a wall or on a tripod. That's followed by an hour or so of frustration as you uninstall and reinstall Steam updates multiple times, scour poorly written forums for technical support, and curse the day you spent £750 or near $800 on it. Google Cardboard, Gear VR and the Oculus Rift all work fine if you're sat in front of a desk or planted in front of a sofa. Sony recommends 9.8 feet of depth and 6.2 feet of width for PSVR, although I've used it in a much smaller space, even in front of a desk, with little trouble. The Vive requires 5 feet by 6.5 feet of space. That's less than PSVR on paper, but the Vive doesn't compromise on space, and you'll need to clear all furniture, pets, and empty pint glasses out of the way before you can game. If you're using PSVR, then very. The head strap is padded in all the right places, spreading the pressure across the forehead and the back of the head, making it easy to wear for prolonged periods of time. Even the way you adjust it with the buttons is extremely slick. That's followed by the Oculus, which rests just in front of your eyes for added comfort, and then the Vive, which is like trying to balance a brick in front of your eyes with a pair of rubber bands. And then there's Google Cardboard, which is like strapping a cardboard box to your face because you're strapping a cardboard box to your face. No. If you're trying to impress someone that's never tried VR before, the Gear VR or even Google's upcoming Daydream headset serve as a great introduction to the technology. The gear is simple to set up and within a few minutes you can have someone watching 360 degree videos and roaming around games like Us 2's brilliant Land's End with ease. However, more discerning friends will quickly see the flaws. There's no head tracking and no input method outside of a single capacitive button. The experiences you can create with Gear VR are limited, and the less said about Google Cardboard, the better. 
Really, you'll want to step up to the Oculus Rift, HTC Vive or PSVR. All are far more immersive thanks to improved visuals and input methods. For the ultimate experience, nothing beats the room scale tracking and hand controllers of the Vive. The tracking is near flawless, allowing devs to create hugely immersive experiences that aren't yet possible on other devices. It really does feel like you've come face to face with GLaDOS or that you're shooting down the zombie hordes when using the Vive. Unfortunately, it also costs £750 or near $800 and that's without a powerful PC included to run it. I also guarantee that every time you try and show the Vive to someone, it will break in some fashion, and you'll have to spend half an hour fixing it, during which time your friend will have regressed to playing Candy Crush, thus being lost to VR forever. For shame. PSVR fares much better. Sure, the visuals aren't quite as sharp, and its archaic tracking system isn't as accurate, but it's simple to set up and is the cheapest of the tethered VR headsets at just £350 or $400. Even adding in the cost of the PS4 and the camera and the move, it's still the cheapest. And you know what? It works really, really well. I'd argue it has the most polished games of all the platforms, and if it's successful, I'd expect that to continue thanks to Sony's relationship with developers. I've spent more time in PSVR than any other headset, simply because it has the most compelling games yet, and it's super comfortable. That leaves the Oculus Rift, and well, as lovely as it is, it's a VR no man's land right now. It doesn't have the ease of use of PSVR, and it also requires a lengthy setup and PC like the Vive. It also doesn't have the hand tracking tech of either so all current games use a standard Xbox controller, which breaks immersion. It's not cheap either at £540 or $600. Oculus Touch will help, but that's another £190 or $200 on top of the price, and it's not launching until December. Basically, go Gear VR if you're totally new to the concept and want to try it out. Go HTC Vive if you have the cash and want the ultimate experience. For everyone else, PSVR is the best option. Technically, PSVR has the lowest resolution displays of all the tethered VR headsets at 1920 by 1080 pixels. Competitors pack in 2160 by 1200 screens, and of course, PCs have more powerful graphics cards. That said, PSVR games like Batman Arkham VR look fantastic, and weirdly, you don't need photorealistic graphics for convincing VR. Accurate tracking, good hand controllers, and high refresh rates are far more important for immersion. Well, you can use all the VR headsets to watch movies on a virtual screen. With the Vive, you can also download apps that let you walk around expensive cars you might like to buy or wander around flats without having to talk to estate agents. Or you can pretend you're shopping for a kitchen in Ikea, minus the screaming children and the inevitable arguments with a loved one on whether you really need those five bright blue lac side tables you've been eyeing up. Totally worth spending £800 on, I promise. Oculus Rift. You definitely want an Oculus Rift. not gear VR. A common problem for all VR owners eager to show their VR headsets to friends. Fortunately, we're in a bar, so let's see what works. Cheers! Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. As it turns out, all the VR headsets are fine to drink beer in. Who'd have thought it? How are we to do it? Easy. 
turns out it's the camera. So there you have it. If money's no object and you've got the room, go for the HTC Vive. It's the no compromises solution. My money's on PlayStation VR though. It's affordable, the games are great, and you don't need to completely rearrange your entire living space in order to use it. If you're still undecided, head over to Ars Technica for reviews of all the VR headsets, and don't forget to like and subscribe.